On a blustery day like today, I thought it would be appropriate to show you one of my favourite rigs, and that is the Drifter rig. Now this rig's been around for a long time, and it was invented by Eddie Turner and his friends in the early to mid 80s, when they were fishing the huge Aberton Reservoir. Typically the rig is used for two reasons. One is for exploring new water, where you can cover most of the lake in a day, or on a huge reservoir you can get your baits out long, long distances where you couldn't ordinarily cast. So let me talk you through this simple rig. First of all, at the top end, we have got the stop knot, which is made of power gum. That would typically be set, well, depending on what, what water you're fishing, but I would typically set that up at four or five feet deep because you don't want this drifter float going over weed beds or snags and getting caught up. So you need it to be quite high in the water level and the pike will come up and take your bait anyway. So that stop knot is determining your depth. Then we've got a small swivel which stops that stop knot going through the boom itself. So it's a small stop knot with a tiny little hole and as you can see it actually locks up and stops against the stop knot. Then we've got the float itself which is fundamentally two parts. You've got the boom which is really important to this rig and the reason why we've got that boom is because it keeps the main line away from the float itself. If you can imagine this float going across the lake on quite a strong wind, it continually spins on the wind and if you haven't got that boom on, the main line will get spinning around this stem and you can get in all sorts of problems um, as it drifts out. So the boom, really important. Then we move on to the float itself, which is a stem. Coming up to the buoyant floating part of it, the poly ball, which obviously keeps the float up buoyant in the water. And then we've got the vane, which acts as the sail. And that will catch onto the wind and it'll move your bait out at quite a healthy pace and it'll take you to distances that you can't catch. So that's the float itself. We then move on to another really important part of the rig and that's what we call the uptrace. The uptrace is there to stop the pike when it takes your bait swimming up in the water with its mouth possibly open when it's taken a bait and taking your main line into its mouth because if that happens you've got a real strong possibility of a bite off and if you get a bite off the pike's got the hooks and a trace in its mouth and it'll get stitched up and may even die. So the uptrace has to be longer than the trace itself. So if you imagine the pike has come up in the water level, taken the bait with the hooks in and then goes onto the up trace which is longer than the actual trace itself. So it's really important. Typically that would be around about two feet but obviously it depends on how long you have your traces. But I would say two foot would be ample with probably an 18 inch trace or slightly less. So that's the up trace. Then we move on to the fixed lead. The reason why the lead is fixed is I don't want that moving up and down the uptrace. I want it to be stuck and solid um, against the swivel that joins the two. So it looks a little bit complex, but it's not really. It's a trace, your main trace, with the lead fixed onto the swivel, joining onto a safety locking clip, which then joins the swivel to the uptrace. So that system is absolutely solid, super strong, and you won't get anything breaking that. So then we move on to the trace itself, which I've made out of Drennan Esox 7 strand, 28 pound breaking. And that goes down to a normal pair of size four hooks, Esox super strong semi-barbed hooks. And that is essentially the rig. So what about the other specialist equipment? The rod, the reel and the braid are fundamental to the drifter system. The rod that I use has been specially developed for the job and it's based on a spod rod. So the test curve is around about four pounds mark 
And the reason for this is that when you're fishing at distance and you get a pike taking the bait, you need to be able to contact it and set those hooks. And if you use typically a two, two and a half pound test curve rod, you've got so much bend in that rod that you just don't set the hooks. And I've done it myself and I've lost quite a few fish before I beefed up to a solid four pound test curve rod. Really important. Then the reel needs to be high capacity because if you're drifting out 80 to 100 yards, you need to be able to have some good thick braid on there and you need plenty of it. You don't want joins or knots to backing lines to appear. You need a good full spool of braid. And then the braid itself, really important, floating braid for drifter fishing because when the float and the vein drift out, you want that line to be nice and high on the water, maybe making a bow to set the, line, the float out even further. So a thick 60 pound floating braid is just the job. So what is it that I like about the drifter rig and why is it one of my favorite methods of fishing for pike? Well, first and foremost, it's really adaptable. You can fish live baits if you happen to have them and if you're allowed to use them. And you can also fish dead baits. Most people think it's just a live bait rig, but there are a number of occasions where I've fished live baits throughout the day, backwards and forwards on the drifter vein, and they haven't worked. But then as soon as I put a dead bait on to try something different, bang, you can have two or three fish. So don't think it's just a live bait rig. Secondly, um, as I mentioned earlier, you can search waters, you can get out to great distances, and if, particularly on a new water, if you're fishing a new gravel pit, it's a great way of searching out that water quickly rather than just sticking a dead bait out at 35, 40, 50 yards. So a great method for searching. But thirdly, there's something about watching a drifter float disappear at long distance. So there it is, the drifter rig. It's both simple and it's strong and it's caught me numerous 20 pound pike from large gravel pits, large res reservoirs, but most importantly, it has undoubtedly caught me fish that I wouldn't have caught with normal traditional methods.